Hey, everyone. Before we get started on today's episode, I wanted to tell you about another podcast Melissa and I are loving these days. It's called As a Meter of Fact with CoServe. It's hosted by a friend of mine, Jason Kress. He's been a guest on our show before, and you may also know him as the co-host of my other show, Podcast for Your Life. As a Meter of Fact helps people become smarter energy consumers, and you know from our episode about the climate that we really care about that a lot. This podcast has science, humor, ways to save money and energy, basically everything you're looking for in a podcast. I like their episode about staying cool in the summer months. It gets very hot here in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> they share some ideas and tips that I'd never heard before, and I found them really helpful. This show is for anyone whose house is powered by electric or natural gas. That's pretty much everyone. So more specifically, this show is for you if you live in North Texas, if you're a CoServe customer, or if you want to see how local utilities can be fun and entertaining. Subscribe to As a Meter of Fact with CoServe wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Okay, today is very much about our everyday life because it's about the sun. Oh, okay. Nice. So today's topic is in honor of our dear friend, Miriam. Uh-huh. I mentioned to her that I was trying to decide what we we're going to talk about this week. And she said, why do things fade in the sun? And why does our hair change color in the summer? Mm, nice. And she said she was inspired to ask these things because she missed the sun because it hasn't been out for a while. Uh -huh. I have to say that I do not miss the sun. <laughs> But in honor of Miriam's sunny disposition, I felt that would be good. And because even though it's winter and cloudy and a little bit, you know, misty and rainy here right now, it is summer for our listeners in Australia and in the other hemisphere. So they yeah. can have a summer themed episode for their summer if they want. And for the rest of us, it can just make us think about summer, which for some of us will be something that we miss and look forward to. Not, Not me, though. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, thanks for at is... least doing it for the rest of us. Okay. You're welcome. For all of us I'm happy to. Who miss the sun or live in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, you guys are welcome. It's, you know, I'm happy to give you a little bit of sunshine in your day. <laughs> now, before I get to the answer to Miriam's question, I did want to just take a moment because this is such a common everyday thing that we all see. For you guys at home to just be able to take a minute to think about what you think happens when things are sitting out in the sun and get faded. Mm -hmm. So just take a moment and think about that and then we'll hop back in with the answer. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to get something in your mind. And now I'm going to tell you the answer to both of those questions. Why things fade in the sun and why our hair changes color in the summer is actually the same. And that's photo degradation. Oh, wow. Big fancy word. <laughs> yeah, that sounds serious. It does sound serious, but all it means is just light that's breaking something down. So light degrading photo degradation. Got it. Got it. So let's talk about what light is. And we've talked about this before, but I think it's beneficial to just revisit it. So light from the sun is quite literally beams of energy. Mm -hmm. And these beams of energy fall both in the visible spectrum. So that's what we can see. And in the UV spectrum. So we can't see things in the UV spectrum. We've talked about that before too, I think on the sunscreen episode. Right, right. So these are literally waves of energy coming into our atmosphere and putting energy into things. And we all, mm -hmm. I think, know that because we learned about how plants turn energy from the sun into food in biology in like fourth grade or whatever. You know, we, we know that. 
But mm-hmm. I think remembering that when we talk about the colors fading is important. Right. Because when the sun is shining down, it's putting energy into all of our things, not just like plants or reptiles who are cold blooded. It's Mm -hmm. also putting energy into the plastic sandbox that you have sitting in your backyard or your (laughs) fence or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those things that have color, it's usually due to pigments. Okay. And pigments are chemicals with chemical bonds. They usually have alternating double bonds. We've talked about that before, I think, in the bleach episode. Can you remember the word for that? Those alternating Uh, double bonds? Hmm. Oh, man. Dang it. I'm going to be so mad when you say it. And (laughs) I can't remember. Conju... I thought you were going to get it. Okay. Oh, conjugation? Conjugation, yes! You give me, obviously, the most important half of the word. But still, you got it, so that's good. I can't believe I didn't remember that, because it's the same as, like, looking at all forms of a verb in a different language or whatever. It's like, all the ways that you can conjugate these verbs into the different forms, whether it's about you, me, us, they, that kind of thing. The same word. <laughs> I never ever realized that that was the same word <laughs> <laughs> i think i thought that last time I maybe just didn't say it but it should have helped me remember so i'm kind of bummed at myself well maybe if you had that it would have helped you so maybe for next time you'll remember okay so those long chains of alternating double bonds conjugated mm-hmm. molecules that's going to be usually what's responsible for giving you color So it's just single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. And it kind of acts like an electron highway where the electrons can move around sort of there. It's nice. It's a a nice thing going on there. Yeah. 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 So when those molecules that give most of our stuff color are exposed to light, they'll usually absorb that light and re-emit. Absorb and re-emit. The electrons are jumping up and jumping back down, jumping up Mm -hmm. and jumping back down. But also, the energy that we put in to molecules is what breaks molecules, mm. what breaks bonds in molecules. You have to put energy in to break a bond. And since UV light and visible light and even the heat that comes from the sun are all energy, as those things are hitting our pigments with these alternating double bonds over and over and over, it can cause some of those bonds to break. Mm. And if maybe one of the bonds in this long chain breaks, then you don't have the same long chain of alternating double bonds and the color can change or go away completely. Okay. So that's why things fade in the sun is over time, bonds are breaking. You have less molecules. You have less intact pigments. Uh And as you have less and less pigments, your color is going to be less concentrated or less vibrant because you literally just have less of the molecules that give color. Mm -hmm. And that is, at least in part, why color fades. Whoa. Interesting. It's Mm -hmm. funny because I just, like... It's one of those things you know ever since you're a kid. Like you leave, yeah, like you said, your sandbox or just like leaving toys out in the sun or something. Or like the new swing set you got, how it slowly just looks less and less new for a number of reasons, but the color specifically. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just funny because I think of it as just, oh yeah, just the sun hits it and just bakes it kind of, you know? And oh yeah, definitely. It just gets lighter. Like it just, I don't really think about it as being like very much a part of the chemistry of something the molecular makeup of something that is not really what would cross my mind (laughs) naturally yeah absolutely well there's a little more to it but i actually if you would would like for you to take a stab at explaining it back to me and then i'm going to talk to you about what else happens when we leave either our hair or our plastics or whatever out in the sun okay to the, Cause there's a little bit more that we can talk about. Okay. So I think I have a kind of idea of how to think about this 
this fading in the sun deal. So, okay, I'm ready. So it starts out with the sun's, you know, putting out energy all the time. Mm-hmm. And we love it. That's why we love the sun. Huge fans of the sun <laughs> over here. Glad you over exist. There, glad- specifically at yeah. Jam's house, not yeah. at my house. <laughs> uh-huh. But you are glad it exists because that's also how we exist and how this that's planet true. exists. Even if I'd- maybe you would prefer it to be behind some clouds all the time, it's still good that it's there. Yes, that's true. I will admit that I know the benefits of the sun. I just think it mostly could do its job from behind the clouds and we'd still be fine. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) So this energy is coming out of the sun. And it actually reminds me a little bit like raindrops. So imagine the the energy that's coming out of the sun that affects a lot of things, both positively and like we're talking about with fading, kind of negatively. It's also like raindrops. There's positive and negative negatives to it. So when the sun's energy hits these items that we've left out, poor items we've left out in the sun, and <laughs> the energy um, goes along these electron highways that also are what gives those items the color they have. Mm-hmm. And that energy starts to break those bonds because it requires energy to break bonds. Mm -hmm. And so a constant just bombarding of energy on these items will speed that process up in a way that would not happen if they were just staying indoors. Correct? Right. Definitely. So it made me think of a similar visual is I've noticed many times when cement gets worn down Mm -hmm. by rain which is kind of funny to think about because rain seems so harmless in just one instance. You're just watching, you know, rain fall down and hit, you know, stuff. And it's just a harmless little raindrop. Just like one second of sunlight seems so harmless, you know? Right. But there's certain areas, especially there's an area at our house where the roof converges and there's not a gutter right there. And so the water that comes off of the roof right there is way stronger yeah, And it hits this part of the cement much stronger. It gets a disproportionate amount of rainfall on that specific spot every time. And so it wears it down in a way that's not the same as other parts of our sidewalk. And that's yeah. obviously a literal wearing down. But in this case, yes. it's more of a molecular wearing down of just mm-hmm. the bonds of the color. Yes. I would say a mechanical wearing down for your cement and a chemical wearing down from your colors and obviously sometimes those items that we leave out in the sun get that mechanical wearing down too but right that was the closest thing i could grab in my brain that felt similar and is like yeah mechanical versus chemical i think that's a great example and actually it kind of reminded me when you're talking of how waves do that to sea glass also you know, oh, yeah. sea glass can get really smoothed down over time, and it is a mechanical wearing down and changing of the qualities of the glass, but it's a slow over time breakdown of something that seems small and insignificant can cause things to change. Yeah. That's a great one. Okay, are you ready for the for the other applications of this idea? Yes, I am. So... The same thing, something similar, I guess I should say, happens to your hair. Okay. But it is, hair is much more complex than just uh, one pigment happening, getting some kind of sun energy, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your hair is a lot of different chemicals. There's proteins, there's pigment, there's all kinds of stuff going on in your hair. Right, right. So one article I read used different shades of hair. They used brown, blonde, red, and they exposed different hair colors to light over a period of time. And they found that the light actually damaged proteins as well as changing the pigmentation. Oh, interesting. So they noted the color visually changing. I think they actually tracked the protein breakdown. Mm -hmm. But the hair changed with exposure to UV light primarily. Mm -hmm. UVA seemed to be responsible for hair color changes. 
and UVB seem to be responsible for protein damages. Okay. They made some guesses as to why, but basically different types of UV can impact your hair differently. Uh But also they noted that blonde hair and blonde hair only change with visible light. Whoa. They also noted that blonde hair changed the most, and it seemed that darker hair was more resistant to coloration changes upon exposure to light. Interesting. Huh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And for those of you at home who have never seen either of us, I have blonde hair, and Melissa has brown hair. Mm -hmm. And as happens with a lot of blonde hair people, over time, my hair has become less blonde. But... One thing that I have always remembered from my childhood is how much blonder my hair would get in the summer, especially as a kid when I run around outside a ton. And I even Uh remember times where I would come back to school at the beginning of the next year and people would ask if I had gotten it bleached or something, even though they already knew (laughs) I had blonde hair because it would, for for them, they remembered me from, you know, some point in May and Uh then they have a huge gap of time. And they see me in August or whatever. Right. But it's a little bit of every day that, that change that happens. But I, it's funny because I wouldn't notice it um, myself, but other people would. But that's crazy that it's actually that different from hair color to hair color. Yeah, because my hair doesn't change colors, really. I, I don't ever remember thinking my hair changed colors in the summer or any other time of year. But also, I don't love being outside. Uh-huh. So that could be a big part of it. Right, right. But... But it makes so much sense that you as a blonde person would notice because this study noted that blonde hair changed more easily. And I wonder, too, they talked about how the different types of UV lights, because I think the pigmentation is at the center of your hair, Mm -hmm. would have to go through more layers. So I wonder if if your strand of hair is actually thicker, if it would be more resistant to color change. Oh, yeah. So that would be interesting, too. I think this was a 2004 study, so I would not be surprised if a lot more research had been done. But this was very interesting and fun to read about. Yeah, seriously. Man, I don't get outside near as much as I should now. And so who knows if like my age is part of it, like our hair just changes as we get older, or if it really is just that over time, my outside time has decreased and that's the biggest contributing factor to hair being less blonde. Who knows, dude? Honestly, who knows? And it's funny because she asked specifically why our hair changes color in the summer. Mm -hmm. And I would contest it's possible that it's not that our hair changes color in the summer, but just that we're outside in the summer. So we have higher exposure to the sun's light. Mm -hmm. But I think also the sun is maybe further away Mm -hmm. in the winter than it is in the summer, I think. And so it could be also that we get more of those rays at different times of year or they're more powerful because they have less distance to travel. I don't really know 100% about that. That's pure speculation. But I wonder if there's something about the distance of the sun that also impacts it as well. Yeah. I think a lot of the seasons is also how direct it is on our part of the earth. It might right. not be that it's further away, but it's just that it's kind of glancing more yeah. than yeah. it is Because they were tilted, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this gets into a part of science that is fascinating, but that I do not know very much about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have also been fascinated by and even know, know even less about. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. Okay. <laughs> Nice. So polymers can also undergo photodegradation. And that doesn't only change their chemical properties, but because those long chains of molecules are so responsible for the the physical properties of of polymers that we feel. I don't mm-hmm. know if physical is exactly the right word there, but mm-hmm. exposure to the sun can actually break down some polymers and make them more brittle. So I read a paper about how that really impacts polystyrene and they're having to put UV stabilizers in the polystyrene. But that made me wonder if exposure to high concentrations of UV light could help us find a new way to break down plastics. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Just a wonder I had in my brain that I have no capacity to do any kind of research on, but that would be very interesting. Yeah, very much so. Huh. Sweet, dude. That's crazy. So that's the power of the sun to change things and really maim things it it really damages things (laughs) yeah yeah we really need it but also wow can it do some damage yeah definitely 
Definitely. And even do damage to my skin, which someone at some point asked what a sunburn is. And I'm going to have to learn more about that. But it it is play along these lines where we're Mm -hmm. absorbing too much energy. But I'm not sure why our body reacts the way it does. That's more biology. But I'm happy to learn about that because that's very applicable to me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So that's it. That's all the science facts I have for you today. Dude, awesome. That was very cool. Interesting how many things get affected in similar ways um, that are kind of everyday. I mean, our, the stuff we use, the plastic, but also our hair and our items that we leave in the sun. <laughs> right. And if you want to learn more about the sun, check out our episode on sunscreen and about light and bleaching. Check out our episode about how bleach bleaches things. Mm-hmm. And somebody asked about that episode recently. They just said, hey, have you ever done one about bleach? Um, mm-hmm. and it was like, yep, we have, <laughs> we definitely yeah, have a lot nice. of them. As our library gets bigger. Totally. It's, it's way more understandable now than it ever has been that like, just, it'd be hard to know which things we already have done because you'd have to swipe through a lot of them. So never hesitate yeah. to ask that. Yeah. Cause we'll remember. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> One time now. someone asked me a question about how something worked that we did an episode on and I had already forgotten. Oh, so, <laughs> you know, it just time it yeah. gets at that memory situation totally i was thinking at least we remember that we did an episode about it even if we forget exactly how it works we could at least be like oh we did that once last year go listen to that version of ourselves that knew it <laughs> yeah i feel like past melissa does a lot of things or knows a lot of things that present melissa has long since forgotten <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of past do you want to talk about something that happened in your week a little week in review sure yes absolutely so this didn't happen like this week per se but just in the past couple of weeks i'm pretty pumped because i accepted a part-time job basically you know i've been doing freelancing for almost a full year now but i started working now part-time for the church that melissa and i go to and met that Yay! Um, yeah, so I'm I'm excited about that. It'll give me time with with people, which I'm really looking forward to. And there's also just a consistency to it that any person who's yeah. freelanced for any amount of time will can tell you that that's one of the biggest downsides, especially about being new to it, like I have been. And so I'm excited about having some steadiness to stuff that is pretty normal week to week, and then can still freelance as I have time for it. So I'm I'm really excited about that. There's a lot of reasons to be excited about it, but I think it'll just feel nice to have some consistency. And of course, it'll be cool just to, for spending time with people in our area to be basically a huge part of my job. So, <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And But you're still doing freelance. So if people love the sound quality of the podcast, they can still hire you to do stuff. Yes. I still am doing <laughs> freelance. I basically just been taking a short break while I... Um, get accustomed to this part-time job. Um, but I, my plan is to be always have some room for some freelance and say yes to things I have room for um, as much as I want to. So the nice thing is I, I don't have to like say yes to every single thing, which I was doing for <laughs> quite a while. Right. Yes. And even it got me in trouble sometimes too, where I had too much. So now I do not, I have a much lower risk of making that mistake. Well, that's exciting, Jam. I'm very happy for you. Yes, I'm I'm pumped too. It's been cool so far. I'm still getting used to stuff, but I'm excited. I will say that was not news to me, but even when I hear about things that I already know are going on in Jam's life, I feel like I get more insight when he shares uh, on Koshi for Life than even I hear about in our <laughs> in our friendship <laughs> life. So yeah. that was exciting. I didn't know that you were enjoying the consistency so much. That's really cool. Yeah, and I think it's fun because like, you sum we summarize it so much more here, which right. can be helpful too. It's like a big, a summary of how you're feeling about this and the benefits and, and negatives in some cases or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I've been thinking about. That's what's happening in my world. What about you, Melissa? Okay, well, it's actually not so different than yours. My job duties haven't changed, but I have been struggling to find and longing for consistency. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. I I have to set my own hours. My schedule changes every semester. 
And it, that's nice because that means I can work extra on Tuesday and then go drop my car off at the oil change on Monday or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. there are nice things about it. But it can be very difficult because I am not inherently extremely disciplined. And that may be surprising for some of our <laughs> listeners because you mostly know me in this chemistry setting. But I will say it has been a lifelong struggle of mine to find some natural discipline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I've been really trying to wake up in the morning, go for a short walk, just like a 20 minute walk. It's some quiet time, my brain to sort of settle and prepare for the day and then get ready and be out the door by a specific time. So trying Mm -hmm. to leave the door at nine o'clock and that's been really nice. My morning routine has been going well. Mm-hmm. However, I cannot go to bed on time. <laughs> so I actually made someone put a lock on my phone to where I can't play on it. <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. I don't have the password. I cannot get on my phone after 1030 PM. And last night I actually fell asleep at nine o'clock. <laughs> Whoa, nice, dude. So I think just knowing that I don't have the option really takes that away and makes me want to just there's nothing else to do so i just Mm -hmm. read until i get sleepy and go to sleep and there's something different about that than looking at your phone you know yeah yeah and so that's been really nice and i'm hoping that i can more consistently have a routine and get my work done in work hours instead of working late because i show up late or whatever you know i can have a more steady time that's my goal for this semester is to get my schedule steadied yeah 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 dude that's tough but very cool that it is working kind of well so far your efforts to rein in that that (laughs) ambiguity a little bit yeah we're we're about a week in to the walks i've been walking for a week and really love that i don't think that that's going to be hard to maintain i am worried about bedtime i've never Mm -hmm. been good at just going to sleep yeah once i put down my phone and turn off the lights i'm out but i don't want to miss out on anything so it's hard for me to stop yeah 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 do you feel like that nighttime like limiting your phone stuff is probably huge i've heard a lot of people say that like looking at a screen before you go to bed like that really sends different signals to your brain instead of like the wind down kind of signals it's you know you're shining a light in your eyes (laughs) so that, yeah. that can have an effect on our ability to wind down and, and get a good night's sleep. So that, that's a really good idea. Well, I'm really excited about it. So, and I'm also really excited that speaking of light, we got to talk about the sunlight today and mm-hmm. that we got to dedicate this episode to Miriam and our Southern Hemisphere listeners. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. And our blondies. And our blondies. Why Here's not? to you, blondies. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for teaching us. And um, those of us who love the sun can just be, have this episode for now while we're waiting for the sun to come back to our <laughs> part of the world on the Northern Hemisphere. Melissa and I have a lot of ideas for topics of chemistry in everyday life, but we want to hear from you, the things you wonder about, the things you think might be chemistry and probably are. Please ask us. If you have any questions or ideas, you can email us on Gmail, you can tweet us on Twitter, you can gram us on Instagram, and you can book us right on Facebook at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem, F-O-R, Your Life, to share your thoughts and ideas. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it, go to ko-fi.com slash Chem for Your Life and donate the cost of a cup of coffee. If you're not able to donate, you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app and rating and writing a review on Apple Podcasts. That also helps us to be able to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. References for this episode can be found in our show notes or on our website. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Hefner and N. Newell, who reviewed this episode.